Hello friends and welcome to another episode here on the channel. We're trying something different today other than having the face cam. I thought I'd just throw up a few games that I did with the team that we're featuring today prior to actually recording the main episode with the rental team. Now the rental team will be up at the end of the episode as always but I thought you would enjoy a few more games with this team just to see a few more aspects of it. See the runnings of it and some of the other elements that we didn't get to see in our kind of main episode that we've already thrown up. Just to recap the team is based around Reggie Rock with that Landorus theory in the Cortana Reggie Rock the Galarian Moltres, Togunamaru, and Tapu Fini. So we've got a lot of different modes within this team. Obviously, Reggie Rock is a centerpiece to the team. It is the Pokemon that I was kind of showcasing in this episode, but we do have some nice other modes there. Obviously, with the Togunamaru and the Galarian Moltres, we have that weakness policy that you can activate on the Moltres with the Volt Switch from the Togunamaru, whilst also protecting it with its Lightning Rod ability from really dangerous threats, things like Regieleki, Tapu Tapu Koko and Thunderous Theory and Form in this format. So, as you can see, we're going to go straight into our first game here. We've led off with our Togo Tomorrow and our Glarian Moltres. We're seeing um, the Whimsicott and the Zapdos. Now, the Whimsicott is going to feel threatened here from potential fake out. Uh, the Zapdos does threaten our Togo Tomorrow, of course, with a uh, um, stab fighting attack. But I feel like we've got the opportunity here to max with Moltres, take down the Zapdos and also go for that Volt Switch into it, proccing the Weakness Policy at the same time. So it's a little bit like what you've seen in maybe other teams that we featured, where you are proccing the Weakness Policy yourself. But I feel like Togunamaru really does this job probably better than most Pokemon that we've got available in the format. And you can see my opponents here threatened from that Fake Out from the Togunamaru, switching it straight out and bringing that Tyranitar in, which isn't really the greatest Pokemon coming in here for us. But we are going to go for that Volt Switch and the Max Airstream into the, the Zapdos. If we can remove the Zapdos, it makes things a little bit easier for us going forward in this game, especially with Togdemar and a few of the other options that we've got in the back. So as we see, the Zapdos actually not wanting to stay on the field. It is faster than both our, our Pokemon, obviously with that base 100 speed stat that it does have there. And we are going to see the Excadrill come out onto the field. Now, this isn't the best for us, honestly, because obviously with the Sand Stream ability, the Sand Rush ability that the Excadrill does have access to, will mean that it is going to outspeed Moltres this next turn, even if we get a Max Air Stream off. Now, we do get to retreat the Togedemaru with the Volt Switch, proc the Weakness Policy at the same time, which is really really nice and it does allow us to get Landorus onto the field which is perfect for us now we can intimidate both of the Excadrill and the Tyranitar on my opponent's side of the field put them down to minus one meaning they're not going to be able to threaten our side of the field as heavily as they would have before this now we do get the airstream off and it does an absolute chunk of damage into this Excadrill obviously it is a resisted attack but plus two special attack from Moltres absolutely destroying it and pretty much putting it out of reach of my opponent going for the max this next turn which is extremely good for us now we do threaten with earthquake obviously from our landorus it's plus one as well at the moment so acting almost like a scarf pokemon and tyranitar is going to be very difficult to take down you can imagine my opponent is probably going to max it here but at the same time you've got to think that the tyranitar probably thinks well i think the moltres is very threatened here it's probably going to max guard so let's go after maybe the landorus here rather than going after the the um the moltres so here i do try and get a little bit cheeky i try and get some damage onto the Tyranitar and it's more at this point about reducing the special defense of the Tyranitar more than anything else with the Max Darkness. Don't need to worry about the Excadrill too much as they say it's so weak at the moment. Lander is going to put a lot of pressure onto it. It's not likely it was going to max anyway so we can freely just Earthquake here and then pick up the knockout there and do some nice damage to the Tyranitar at the same time. So we do see the Excadrill actually switch out for the Zapdos which is nice coming in there for my opponent. So a nice play. They're going to be immune to the Earthquake but it does proc the weakness policy on the Tyranitar like we suspected. It does put the Tyranitar back to plus one attack after the Intimidate drop that we initially put on with the Landorus. And we go for that Max Darkness into the Tyranitar and you can see how thick this Tyranitar is. Even with plus two special attack from a Moltres, still not doing anything in this Sandstorm. Now the Defiant ability does 
proc on the Zapdos, but I'm not too concerned about that right now, as we see just a Max Knuckle come out from the Tyranitar, and it is into our Moltres. We are able to take that, obviously. This does put the Tyranitar now back up to plus two. Now, it is getting a, a little bit more threatening here going forward, uh, but we do have our Berserk ability active now with our Moltres. Because of that drop below 50%, we are plus one speed with our Moltres and plus one speed with our Landorus, so we're not in the worst spot at all so we go for another earthquake here and we go for another max airstream into the zapdos and i still think my opponent's probably feeling a little bit like well the moltres is in such an awkward position now we could we could attack into that but it may max guard and i think probably the max guard here isn't the worst play in the world because the tyranitar can just pick up the clean knockout onto Moltres. Now, whether or not it can pick up the knockout onto Landorus is another thing, but at the same time, we just need to get damage onto this Tyranitar. So what we try and do is we go for the Max Airstream into the Galarian Zapdos while we've got the opportunity to, because obviously the Earthquake isn't going to be able to take it down or touch it because of its flying type attack. We get enough damage into that Tyranitar as well, which is perfect. Get another Airstream, which will mean that now if the Extra Drill does come back in, we are going to be able to outspeed it even in the Sandstorm because we're kind of matching that speed boost that it's got there. So. You can see the lander is putting the Tyranitar in a, a little bit of an awkward spot now because once it's not maxed anymore, it's going to be able to go down pretty easily to most attacks. So you see a max darkness come out from the Tyranitar into the Landorus and take it down. So yeah, my opponent probably predicting there that we were going to go for the max guard. Now we are in our last turn of our max turns, so you've got to assume that uh, Moltres will go down uh, this next turn. Um, because the Tyranitar still got one more turn to go in this battle. Now we do bring Togedemaru in, which we, is great news for us now that the Whimsicott coming back onto the field and it's probably going to go for the, the, the Tailwind. Now how it switched out earlier on, you would assume that it probably doesn't carry Protect. You've got to worry about Helping Hand, of course, because that is another option to get around the Faker potentially here. But I think one thing that we want to try and do is just get as much damage onto Tyranitar. It's risky going for a hurricane here if we're Moltres. Um, so I think the, 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 um, the dark type attack here is probably the better option just to get damage onto the Titar. It's not going to do much damage, but we are plus three. We've got our Berserk, our Weakness Policy proc, and it will do enough damage to the Whimsicott, I feel, at this point. So we can fake it out and maybe put it in range to pick it up the next turn. So we do get that fake out, stop the Whimsicott going for that Tailwind, which is very useful. The Fiery Wrath coming out, doing a decent amount to the Tyranitar and the Whimsicott. As we see, actually just another Max Knuckle here from the Tyranitar, which is great, into the Togodomaru here. Um, and it will take it down to its sash, but that's perfectly fine with us because now, even if that Tyranitar gets the Tailwind up this next turn, we're going to be able to get a Fiery Wrath off again, pick up the knockout onto the Tyranitar. It's not going to be maxed anymore. And also we'll be able to get the knockout onto the Whimsicott. So that's really good news for us. Now the Whimsicott is kind of locked here where it can't Moonblast because we outspeed it. And if it goes for Tailwind, then we get the Fiery Wrath off. So we're in a, a phenomenal spot right now with just our Moltres. And even though this team is really based and centered around that Reggie Rock, this is a really good example to show you how the other elements of this team can perform as well. You know, the, the Togodomaru Moltres combination is such a strong pairing, and I feel like it's this is a very good example against a pretty hard matchup in all accounts uh, where it's doing very well. Now, the Tyranitar here just want to stall out and actually get the Tailwind up, guaranteed with the Whimsicott, as we do see that set now. But we are going to get a Fiery Wrath, which will just take down the Whimsicott, and even with the Excadrill coming in, because the Sandstorm is ending this next turn the Moltres will still be out, able to outspeed the Excadrill in the Tailwind. So this, it kind of all plays together for us right at the end of this game where we are able to kind of deal with everything on my opponent's side with just the Moltres and the Togodomaru for the most part. The Landorus obviously did help with the Intimidate, but for everything else, I think my opponent really missed a lot of opportunities to deal with the Moltres, maybe predicting that uh, we were max guarding when we weren't. And I think playing more aggressively in this match really paid off for us. As you can see now, the Fiery Wrath is gonna be able to just clean up the Tyranitar and the Excadrill pretty easily. And that takes us to a nice victory to kick us off in today's episode.
So our next opponent up is playing a team of Cinderace, the Tapu Lele, Tornadus, Bishop, Toxicity and the Dracovich. So this one's going to be quite a nice one, I feel, for Reggie Rock to come in and do some work. There's not too many things on my opponent's team that really threaten the Reggie Rock, other than probably the the Dracovich. Obviously, the Tapulele can be threatening. Reggie Rock not the strongest on the special defensive side, but it can take the Psychics, and we do have our own terrain that we can disrupt their Psychic terrain with with Tapu Fini. So as you can see in this match, I was really worried about the Dracovish, probably more than anything, and obviously a Tapu Lele lead as well. Normally Tapu Lele are a lot faster than Tapu Fini, so it's safe for us in this situation to lead off with Tapu Fini to override the Psychic Terrain. And at the same time, we also do kind of put off the Dracovish from doing very much damage if it does lead like we're seeing here. So the Tapu Fini, we're in a nice position. We can stop a potential Tailwind from this Tornadus here with Fake Out from the Togodomaru and just throw a Moonblast out onto the Dracovish. And the thing by going for the Moonblast here into the Dracovish slot, even if it switches out like we are seeing now, you get the potential to do some nice damage onto something coming in and it is that Tapu Lele is going to overwrite the terrain on the field to the Terra. The, the psychic terrain activating but because tornadus isn't uh, on the ground it's not affected by the terrain we do see it proc that psychic seed but it is going to be susceptible to fake out because obviously they're not grounded it is not going to be affected by the psychic terrain as we are going to get a nice bit of damage off with our type of finny into the lily now we don't get the special attack drop which would have been really nice there but we're still not in a bad spot now what we could do here is volt switch out or nuzzle with our Togodomaru into the Tapu Lele um, and then switch out our Finny because we need to get Finny off the field to bring it back onto the field to reset our terrain. Now that's the biggest thing for us here because otherwise the Tapu Lele is going to be able to throw out big damage. The Tornadus here is going to have the opportunity to get a Tailwind up and put that Tapu Lele into an incredible spot. Um, and thankfully because of the DLC, Tapu Lele didn't get Expanding Force because that would have just been such a horrible Pokemon to deal with. It has to only rely on Psychic or Psy Shock now, which is probably good for us in this situation. Now we do see the Tailwind set up there from the Tornadus and uh, we get the Psychic attack into Alandris. Now because we've got the Assault Fest there, it means we are able to take that quite comfortably, which is great for us. Uh, we get the Nuzzle off, which kind of nullifies the tailwind from my opponent onto that Tapu Lele at least for the the longevity of this tailwind whenever it's out on the field now we can go for a volt switch here I think we do that with Togodomaru we want to try and reposition and also go for a u-turn as well with Landorus it's a good time now to try and get Reggie Rock onto the field we can overwrite the psychic terrain with our Tapu Fini um, and just lower the attack power of the um, psychics from the Tapu Lele in general which is also a nice option but we do see an icy wind come out from the Tornadus now just because of the assault vest because of the damage that we've taken prior to that with the Landorus we aren't actually able to take it from the Tornadus which means Landorus does go down unfortunately um, the psychic coming out into the Togodomaru and we are able to get the Volt Switch off with our Togodomaru. Do some nice damage into the Tornadus. Get our Tapu Fini back onto the field. And it does mean now that we can get Reggie Rock onto the field for free. We're not take, we're not bringing it in on any damage. And that's the perfect situation you want for Reggie Rock most of the time. So we can get it in now. Bear in mind that my opponent still has their max uh, available to them. But we want to start kind of taking advantage of that right now. We're going to lock in and go for a Moonblast into the Tapu Lele. And rather than max ourselves, I think we're just going to go for a rock slide here. We want to kind of wait till if we can get rid of the Tornadus and the Tapu Lele here with a Moonblast rock slide combination, then it makes things a lot easier for us for the rest of this game where we've still got our max when our opponent brings theirs onto the field. So we see a Air Slash, the Tornadus trying to probably flinch the Tapu Fini here, but not going to be quite enough. So we do see the double up into it there, leaving the Reggie Rock alone, which is ideal for us right now. We don't flinch, thankfully get enough damage into it with the, the Moonblast, but Tapu Lele avoids the Rock Slide. We could have really done with that there because when we clear the field, making things a lot more easier for us going into the last stages of this game. Now we do take the Tornadus down and you've got to expect maybe the Dracovish to come back onto the field now for my opponent. They haven't got too many turns of Tailwind left, but we really need to be careful with Tapu Fini here. They don't actually bring out the Dracovish, reveal their fourth Pokemon in Cinderace. So we need to be mindful. Like I was saying, the Tapu Fini is very important for us in this match. So I think one thing to consider here is if we can 
protect our Tapu Fini as much as possible uh, and then keep it for the Draco Fish in the late game. It will help us out a bunch because otherwise we will struggle against the Draco Fish with those very powerful Ficious Wrens that it can throw out. So we're going to take this opportunity to finally max our Reggie Rock and locking in with a max knuckle just to get an attack boost onto it early on. Now we are seeing the Cinderace on my opponent's end max as well. So we do have to kind of deal with that. But by protecting Tapu Fini here, it means we stole out at least the last turn of Tailwind. We can get some nice damage onto the Cinderace here as well. Um, and Tapu Fini will be able to stick around for this next turn. Like we've just been talking about, it's quite important that we keep it for at least the Draco Vish matchup later on in this game without lurking in the back still. So we are actually going to be able to see finally Reggie Rock max for this episode which is really good and we can see it in action here and now thankfully actually really good that we did go for the max knuckle into that cinderace because it targets down the tapu finny with a max strike which they're trying to reduce the speed stat on our side of the field and obviously pick up the knockout onto tapu finny as well but because we did protect it just means we are able to take that and they actually proc uh wiki berry which gives us a bunch of health back making the end game versus the dracovish a lot easier right now so we do see a psychic come out from the tapu lele it does go into the reggie rock but we do take that pretty comfortably and the max knuckle now coming out into that cinderace we don't manage to pick up the knockout but we do get a plus one in our attack stat, meaning that Reggie Rock is going to now start being able to hit very, very hard. So we do have the leftovers on there as well, which makes it incredibly good and incredibly annoying for my opponent to deal with. Now we've got an option here where we could keep the Tapu Fini in, um, but it's probably better, like we've been saying, this whole kind of theme of this match is keeping Tapu Fini around till the late game. So we're going to switch it out and kind of use Togodomaru as fodder here just to come in and take an attack. We then go for the Max Rockfall into the Cinderace here. And that plus one Max Rockfall should be enough to get the Cinderace. And I'll also throw up the Sandstorm as well to mean that Tapu Lele is going to start to be chipped down as well. It's so low health, it probably only needs two rounds of Sand Chip to go down. And then we've only got that Dracovish to worry about in the late game. And you can see we do switch out the Tapulele here, the Togodomaru coming onto the field. Just as fodder really, it means that we just are able to deal with the Cinderace. We can lose our Togodomaru, which is fine. Reggie Rock doesn't really care about its speed stat. It's going to be the slowest thing on the field anyway in comparison to what my opponent's bringing. And we get pretty fortunate here. That nuzzle that we put onto the Tapulele earlier comes into effect, leaving the Tapulele fully paralyzed, which is amazing, um, and allows us to pick up a clean knockout onto the Cinderace, meaning that we've only got the Dracovish and the Tapulele to deal with now. So as you can see, the Dracovish comes onto the field. Now, this is still a little bit tricky, um, but I think we're not on a bad spot, to be honest. We just need to make sure that we go for a double up into the Dracovish at this point. Moonblast and a Max Rockfall. Either one will be able to take down this Dracovish from this point, and um, they can only really attack one or the other with Dracovish, and I don't think the Fisher's Rend would be able to get the Reggie Rock from this range. They do target into the Tapu Fini, unfortunately, so we do lose it there. As we see, we take a Psychic, but so comfortably from uh, from this point, from the Tapu Lele. We get that Max Rockfall into the Dracovish, and it is going to be more than enough. A plus one to take down the Dracovish, and uh, Reggie Rock going to be able to deal with this Tapu Lele quite easily, even when we aren't maxed. And the Sand is up at this point as well. We're getting a little bit of recovery back through our leftovers. And I think this match is quite nice, just to show how much of a tank Reggie Rock can be. And, you know, it's kind of single-handedly almost won this match by itself. We can't obviously take away from how much work the Tapu Fini and the Togodomaru and other members of the team have done. But Reggie Rock just able to, to single-handedly pretty much knock out most Pokemon on my opponent's team, which is really nice. So...
So we go on to our next game, and this is going to be against Heatran, Rhyperia, Dusclops, Galarian, Moltres, Clefable, and Tapu Koko. So for the rest of this episode, what I'm going to do is just speed these games up. You guys can enjoy them. There are going to be three more games, and then the rental team will be at the end of the episode. So I hope you do enjoy the rest of the games. Hope you enjoy the team if you've been featuring it. And also let me know down in the comments if this content is something you'd like to see more of with extended games and things like that. I do practice with the teams that I put together for the channel anyway so I, these are something i can put together and it just gives you a bit more of an in-depth look at the teams and maybe how some of the other elements of the team that we couldn't cover initially do get to feature and you can sit back now enjoy the rest of the games and i'll see you all for another episode soon so until then take care and bye bye